figure out what is it they need and what are you going to be able to provide to them. So that was always a concept. I talk about it with my team at work all the time, like negotiating with people that we don't want to do something, but it's not because we don't want to do it. It's like we want to make sure that we're the, the best value or the best bang for our buck. So think about that concept. Welcome. This is the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping others through real estate investing. Our hosts interview guests from all aspects of real estate investing who generously share valuable experiences and advice. Whether you're starting out or an experienced investor, this is the show for you. Hello and how's it going? My name is Travis Shelton and welcome to the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast where I interview guests who want to help others investing in real estate. We keep these fun and full of value and super pumped to have a discussion today with a personal friend, Jason Bunting, a husband, a father of one incredible nine-year-old and a leader with a passion for helping others. Jason, thanks for joining me, buddy. Cool. Thank you, Travis. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. Well, I know you pretty well, um, but can you give our audience your 30 second elevator pitch a little bit more about yourself and your real estate focus? Yeah, for sure. So I'm um, born and raised in Phoenix. I've spent my whole life in the West Valley. Um, wanted to grow up to be a pharmacist. That's why I got into the, that's why where I met you a little bit. Wanted to be a pharmacist, got into it, decided I didn't like that, and then shifted over to like leadership. Um, and that's where I really found something that I, I've been really passionate about helping others through leadership and those types of things. Um, real estate kind of came along because as I was looking for my own house, I'm like, I really enjoyed looking at houses. I was like, how do I do this for a living? Yeah. Um, found out helping people find houses was more exciting to do that like as a side gig than a full-time job. Having to rely on real estate and kind of hustling wasn't something that I was super excited about. So I really uh -huh. shifted, yeah, shifted that mindset to say, hey, I can do real estate on the side, but I want to continue my leadership career. Um, and that's really taken off. I've been at Humana for 12 years, went from a frontline associate answering phones um, to like the last year driving the strategy and business growth for a large mail order pharmacy. So it's been a pretty incredible ride. No, oh, that's awesome. And probably made the right decision not going the pharmacist route, um, <laughs> you know, but you're, you're obviously doing really successful in your career and your real estate career. So um, we always start our podcast out with some motivation. So what is the motivational quote you'd like to share? A uh, motivational quote for me is don't take life too seriously. You'll never get out alive. Most people have not heard that from the originating um, author, but okay. I got it from Van Wilder. Okay. Um, <laughs> Kind of a joke in high school, we watched that movie, wanted to party like him. But I think I've taken that and really used that as a, a platform for my life because it's as true as it can be, right? Don't yeah. take anything too serious. If you screw up, that's okay, move on. If you do well, acknowledge it, but move on. Like Life is still going to be here no matter what. Absolutely. No, I, I love it. I mean, I think it's one of those things that we, we can all get too serious in our day to day jobs or, right. you know, maybe something with your family. But at the end of the day, it's like you got to let ro things roll off your chest and, and uh, look at the positive side of things. So I, I love that quote and definitely a big fan of Van Wilder. So I, too, had never heard that quote from the original person. I thought that was a Van Wilder quote. So that's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> Yes. All awesome. right. So transitioning into our main topic, how can you help our audience of real estate investors? So this is probably a little bit unique. So I don't do an investing now for myself. Um, I really got into it. It's, it's been almost a year the, since the first time I attended one of your um, events um, and it opened up my eyes. I'm like, well, I probably don't have the capacity to do it now. And I had just gotten promoted like that week. So like life was in a little bit of a whirlwind. So yeah. I spent the last year really focusing on what do I want to accomplish, whether it be real estate investing, whether it be um, working on my career. And I've really kind of taken that how I feel I could help others is how do I help them lead through different aspects of life, whether that be need, mm -hmm. needing to talk to like a career coach or you're trying to figure out a situation where you're just not sure how to how to tackle that. I think I've done really well for myself in helping people navigate ambiguous situations. And a lot of times they come up to the answer themselves. They just need someone that has a little bit of understanding about something to help them realize that they know the answer. So I think a way that I could help the team is, or the group is if someone comes and has questions about how do you handle this sort of buyer? How do you handle this sort of seller? Or how do you ask another investor to do something? And it's all about like getting to know that person and kind of thinking about how you frame up what you're looking to get and what value you can bring and what value you want them to bring to you. Um, so nothing specific about, Hey, do this and you'll, you'll win this investment or do that, but sure. it's really just 
being a sounding board is something that I really enjoy doing. Like I love learning about people and what drives other people. And I kind of put that away. Okay, I could use that from a conversation or, hey, I talked to someone a month ago about this and I learned more about it. Let's go reconnect with that person. No, I mean, I think those are all hugely valuable traits, right? Like you have to be able to accept coaching. And also it's nice in this real estate world, especially to be able to be coached. So it's, it's commonplace that I'm asking other people more seasoned than me or even less experienced that, but maybe they have done something I haven't done. Um, you know, what's their, what's their recommendation? What's their advice? What would you do? Even yourself, maybe you haven't technically invested, but you help a lot of investors buy pr properties. You help a lot of people look for homes and you're in the real estate game. And so, you know, what's the current market like? What's this, what's happening here? I'm sure a lot of people knowing you're a realtor, they probably ask you all the time about the market, about rates, about this, right? Like every day. And so, uh, those are all amazing things. And so one of the things we talked about a little bit pre-show is like you focusing on how important your direct network is. So let's talk about that. Like you have this full-time job, you're very successful at Humana, been there 12 years, like going up this leadership rank, but yet you have this side hustle. Um, where do you get your clients? Like how, you know, you talked about network, but like, are you out there advertising for your realtor business or, or how are you finding these people? Great question. So, so one of the things that I really pride myself on is like being transparent and building, building a good foundation of like friendship. So I do about four to six deals since 2000 and so 2015 or 2016, I think when I got my license, um, the very first year it was, was my biggest year. I, and most of those <laughs> I sold, I sold my own home. I bought a new house. My best friend sold their house, bought a new house, my wife's best friend. So like, I think I made like well into like the 200,000 my first year. I'm like, Oh That's shoot. Awesome. So I was like, I was pumped. Yeah. Um, but like reality is like, it was a lot of work just to get through that as a new, as a new agent. So I was like, well, that's where I made that decision. It's like, I can do this, but let's keep it on the side. Yeah. But a lot of it's just been communicating with friends. Like my, my close group of friends is really small. There's maybe only like five or six of us, but okay. what's nice is those guys like trust me with their lives. Right. Absolutely. So if they trust me with their lives, they're going to tell all their friends, Hey, I know here's a guy, here's my buddy. He's a realtor. Um, I've had quite a few friends become realtors as well. And I'm really promoting them as well. Cause if I don't get the deal, someone I know gets a deal. I'm happy. Yeah, right. It's a win. So that's, that's, what's been really cool about this. And I've helped some investors. And one of the things that I think investors appreciate about is like, I'm transparent. If I don't know, I'm going to tell you, I don't know, but I'm going to either help you find the answer or tell you where to go to get the answer. But people appreciate that the candid transparency. And I feel like that's really helped other people sell me as a realtor. Um, and a lot of the people that I've helped some people I work with, like they were direct ports of mine or they were peers of mine mm -hmm. and they know me at work. So they know that my work ethic at work is good. So my real estate work ethic is probably just as good. So that's really yeah. helped keep that four to six deals going on a year. Um, and I haven't, haven't had a lot of repeat business. I like the only person I've ever helped through marketing is I, I found someone on Facebook that was complaining about their neighborhood. <laughs> and I said, Hey, I can help you get out of that situation. And two weeks later sold their house, bought them a brand new house. And, and it was awesome. They still keep in contact today. And they're like, Hey, I'm probably going to move. Do you want to sell the house? So it's just been like being real with people, I think is something that's really helped catapult that part of my life. No, that's amazing. And I mean, it, it shows how literally just working your own sphere of influence and being yes. a good person can make you enough money in a business or side hustle, whatever it might be, right? And it's a side hustle for you, but four to six deals or that 200,000 you made, you know, year one, like that's an amazing lifestyle. And most full-time realtors only make 36,000 a year, right? I mean, I don't know how that happens because like my, me too, as a side hustle, I do, you know, I'll, I'll do realtor business and, and do some transactions. I don't really advertise. I, I don't, do anything but referrals or, you know, really word of mouth or other right. investors. Um, but it is, it's so interesting that I see others struggle being a full-time realtor. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And it's <laughs> focusing first on the people, you know, right? Those people that yeah. know, like, and trust you are going to tell people. And that's all, I, all my re referrals come through word of mouth, um, similar to yours. So, uh, I think it's a great business model. I do think, uh, I mean, there's the Buffini system out there. That's literally, that's what they teach you to do is just to work your own sphere of influence in those people. And then they have their 10 people and they have their 10 people. And before you know it, you actually have a huge network of individuals. Um, so let's talk about maybe setting expectations when you do have that full-time job, right? And you have a family, like 
When are you showing properties? How are you setting those expectations with your clients or potential interested uh, individuals? Yeah. So that's a, a really good thing. And I think it's one of the hardest things to do as a realtor because I think people often think that you're available 24 seven. All like, time. Yep. Yeah. It's like you don't have a life. You don't have that. So that's one thing I said like flat out is like, hey, like I have a primary job. It's typically from 7 a.m. to 4 ish. I'm very fortunate that if I need to take time in the middle of the day because a deal pops up or a house pops up, you want to look at it. There's sometimes that like I have that flexibility. That's so really it's just saying, hey, you have this time between this time and you will have my undivided attention. And I'm going to be completely transparent if I can't help you at this time or I can't help you here. But that's my motto, right? So yeah. if you're okay with those expectations, we can move forward. But if not, like, hey, here's a friend. Here's that friend. So just being clear and, and really defining that up front. And people respect that. And I think sometimes we'll get around that. They'll hit me up extra times throughout the day. And I'm like, hey, I'll get back to you in about an hour. Or I'll get back yeah. to you tomorrow. It's it's really like I think some people are scared to tell people no, yeah. And I think they often feel like that person's gonna like hold a grudge against them. But I think being real helps people realize that you're a human being too. Like you're just like them. You have a job just like them. Absolutely. <laughs> or have a family. Like I mean, people understand now. If it's in the middle of a transaction and negotiation, like I'll work crazy hours or do whatever I have to. Right. But I tell people like you know setting expectations. Like hey, I'm off at six. Like that that's when family time starts for me. Like. You know, I, I try not to answer text messages. I might if you get lucky, but t the expectation is, hey, the next morning you're going to hear from me. Um, right. And you got to set those expectations for you to not go crazy. Right. And also, like if you set them up front with your clients, most will be, oh, yeah, that seems that's reasonable. And they'll accept that as opposed to if all of a sudden you're answering a text at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night that becomes a norm. And then all of a sudden that's the expectation. And so it's, it's, I, I love the, you know, setting the ground rules up front and setting those expectations up front. Um, I wanted to take just a step back. Cause I didn't ask you, like, did you get your real estate license just to sell your own house that year? Or like, were you already kind of looking into real estate or what made you get your license? So it's an interesting story actually. So right out of high school, I went, GGCC because I was like, well, I need to get some credits. I need to like do that. So one of my extra curricular uh, credits was real estate. So you have to take your 90 hours. Oh, cool. So I did that in 2006. I took those okay. classes, got the little piece of paper that says, hey, go take the test. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually take my test until 2000 and it was nine years later. So 2014. <laughs> Do they still so count it? <laughs> yeah, they're good for 10 years. And so I Googled that. I'm like, hey, how long is your like credits worth? It was worth 10 years. So I started taking the test. It took me four times to pass. I passed the national exam the first time, but the state okay. gave me problems yeah. with like legislation. So, yeah. so my very first house, I actually didn't have my own license. It was okay. like, so I'm like, well, that nine year, that 10 year gap's coming up. So I got to get it. So I ended up just doing it. And then within that next probably year and a half, two years, I ended up selling my own house. Um, but I was just a... I was always interested in it from when I was like out of high school, but I just never, it's like, I don't really need it. So I didn't really go and pursue it. So <laughs> had I have done that maybe in 2006 or 2007, when I first got the credits, I probably would have been better off or maybe have been a lot further along, but I was just always in the back of my head that I wanted to do it at some point. So I started the groundwork and just took forever to actually take the test. <laughs> no, that's funny. Um, and so you don't do any advertising like you don't no. do you tell all your friends I'm a realtor like it's just literally when someone finds out you help sell your buddy's home then they refer you yeah so a close friends of mine know um, like acquaintance that I've worked with like a lot of it's happened like I worked with people at Walgreens years mm -hmm. ago and they're like well Jason was talking about getting his real estate license they'll hit me up or people that I worked with at Humana that have left like well I remember Jason talking about that and they'll ask hey do you still do real estate yeah like yeah. It's really just been word of mouth and telling people at first. I don't really talk about it too much. Like when people ask what I do, yeah, I always want to say real it. estate, but it's never real estate. It's never the first thing out of my mind. It's never like, hey, what do you do for a living? It's always, well, I work at Humana. It's never real estate. And I don't know why that is. I just, it's just funny it, how so it works out. Ironically, I'm the exact opposite. So <laughs> like even I've been at places with like my dad or my wife and they're like, why do you say that? And I'm like, what does pharmacy give me? What if I tell them I'm a pharmacist or that I do X, they're going to start asking me about drugs or some story or ask me to look at something. I'm like, I, no value comes of me telling them that. I'm like, maybe they think I'm smart. 
But if but, I tell them in real estate, everyone has a real estate story. Everyone has a story. And maybe it becomes a value. Hey, I can, maybe they're a potential investor in the future. Maybe they want to get rid of a property. Maybe they have a problem I can help solve. I'm like, so there's more value always in me telling someone I'm a real estate investor, I'm a realtor, than I'm a pharmacist. And so I literally, probably like 10 years ago, um, I mean, I got my license in 2014. I've been telling people I'm a realtor or a real estate investor since then. And um, <laughs> it is funny. My dad's like, you have a doctorate, like you should probably tell people you're a pretty successful pharmacist. So I'm like, yeah, but like, what's the point of that? Like yeah. there's zero value comes back my way for that. Um, so it's just, it's, it's so funny, funny that you're like the exact opposite. Yeah. And, it, and it's not even like, I, I always think about it. It's like, hey, like I go golfing. The first yeah. thing you do, like, Hey, what do you do for a living? It's never realer. And I don't know. It's like, I try to make it that, but it just never comes out. It doesn't it's come weird. out naturally. <laughs> So are you looking like, I mean, you're, you're doing successful and on the side, I mean, mm -hmm. but you don't want to blow that up. Like you don't want to like build your realtor business or like you said, you had friends, like maybe build a team where you have a couple people if you're not available. Have you ever thought of doing anything like that? Um, I always think about it. It just comes back to like, and my, the, like the stability of the job I have. Yeah. Um, and even though like a year ago, the reason I got promoted is because Humana went through a reorg. My boss got let go, like 200 senior leaders got let go. So I was lucky that I kept my job. So there's that point of like realization that that's really what catapulted me into going to the, the meetup. But then also this last year, really focusing on that. So I think in the next five years, I do want to have that part set up. I really want to be like the investment side where it's a little more hands off, but real yeah. estate is still my primary income. Mm -hmm. So it's there, but making that leap is challenging from a headspace perspective. Yeah. Like, do you give up this paycheck essentially this guaranteed paycheck and that's like it just messes with your head that way and i just have never made that commitment for sure i see a lot of people they they go they leave that job too soon right and i haven't left my job either right and if you can manage it and you don't hate it and you like it and you're making a good paycheck hey yeah. why not collect a good paycheck and then have this like extra bonus you know side hustle available for even bigger potential paydays or just for horizontal income you know and that that's what i utilize it for um, I've conscientiously not wanted to build that because I don't want to spend every Saturday and Sunday showing homes, right? Like I, I wanted to, I worked hard to get a Monday through Friday job and then it's like, Hey, and then you go get a job that you have to be available every evening and weekend. That's tough. Like I go on vacation, you feel bad. You know, it's a buyer seller's market. You can't show that home and it goes away. Like the clients are mad at you. Well, I got to get a vacation too. So like I've, like purposely not wanted to necessarily grow it, but I like the fact that, Hey, I can make 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a year with a little side hustle with very minimal effort really. Um, and it just helps me always stay in the game, right? Like I'm always looking as an investor. I'm always looking at properties. I'm always hearing people what, what's happening. I'm knowing rates. So it keeps me always in the buying mode. Even if I'm mm -hmm. not buying and as an investor, I love that personally. Right. So, um, let's talk a little bit more about what's next, right? So like you mentioned, like you're interested in investing, you've busted your butt to be able to pay off debt, do what you got to do to now you're looking to be, be an investor. Mm -hmm. So what are you looking to invest in and kind of walk through that mindset and kind of where your head is right now? Yeah. And, and one of the things that I did, so as soon as my life changed for the better that year ago. And I was like making this money and thinking about how, what do I do with this? Like, this is more than one family needs to live off. So it's like, I got to be able to do this for like long term. Mm -hmm. So I hired a financial advisor and we were like, went through the ropes of like, what's the best way? Like I looked into um, franchising. I looked to like other things and I'm like, no, real estate's got to be what it is. I'm already in it. I know enough about it where I can still make educated decisions. Yep. So I really decided like, an investment is where I want to go. Multifamily was ideal. I'm very focused on, I want it to be in Phoenix because I feel like my first one, I want to be able to like have hands on it and not have to travel outside the state to do yeah. so. Um, in the last two months, my wife and I have really created the idea that it needs to be a vacation rental okay. or somewhere enough like where I could do a long-term rental in like in Prescott or vacation rental in like Williams or Flagstaff. That's where we're really focused on right now. Okay. Um, but I still need to drive more capital. And that's where I'm like, I want to save more, put a little bit more away because of interest rates have kind of priced a lot of things are out of market now because interest rates. And I know that it's not like the long term isn't going to history. Interest rates won't impact me negatively forever. Yeah. But I got to get over that piece and just buy the property. So my focus now is a vacation rental or a long term rental 
up in that area. So if I ever wanted to use it from a vacation rental perspective, I could use it. Or in a two or three years, if I'm in a better position, the long-term renter is not there anymore, I have it available for use. So that's yeah. where we've kind of landed um, and what I'm looking for. Uh, since it's since it's been a year since I've been in the role, time is starting to, I'm, I have a little more time back in my day where yeah. when you first started a new job, obviously you're just, you're working way more hours than you should. So now, now that I've been able to kind of slow that down, I've gotten right back into the swing of let's figure it out. And I have a very good uh, financial advisor that kind of keeps my, keeps me grounded a little bit and reminds me like, Hey, let's put this money aside for this. Like I have a one year goal, three, five, 10 year goal with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and they help really remind me and, and help facilitate what it is that I want for my future. And they, they keep me kind of grounded for that. And I'm thankful that I have those guys because there's sometimes you just, you're, you're kind of get crazy about this is what you have. You want to go spend it, but now you got to keep pushing for that, that goal. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. What is up, Hot REI Nation? My name is Jordan Nadella with Simplicity Lending Group and powered by Nexa Mortgage. As the nation's largest broker, Nexa Mortgage offers a variety of creative and competitive loan options through our 170 plus partnerships to help you achieve home ownership with the speed and service that you deserve. Whether you are a first time home buyer or an experienced investor, I'm dedicated to finding the right program to fit your financial goal. My mission is to make home ownership a very easy and seamless process from start to finish. If you are in the market today to purchase real estate, please contact me to find the best mortgage solution for your needs. Love it. And definitely want to have you back on once you buy your first investment property so we can kind of talk through like, here's what happened. Here's what didn't go right. 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 Here's what went right. Um, but I mean, me personally, I, I love Northern Arizona. I love investments up there. We obviously have the cabin uh, short term rental up there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I love the fact that you can utilize real estate both as a means to have that second home or, or you know, investment property. Um, mm-hmm or vacation property and then also use it to be making you money. And like, that's the, like mine cash flows. Plus we can go up there and utilize it. Um, you know, reasonably, um, unfortunately it's a good one. So it's like every weekend's booked, <laughs> but it, you know, that's like, Hey, I, I, I can deal with that, you know, when I'm making money. Right. So, um, yeah. Anything we didn't cover that you'd like to cover that maybe I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with the audience. I think we went over everything. Okay. To be awesome. honest. So are you ready for the hot seat? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. We ask all our guests the same final four hot questions. Number one, Jason, what is one book you'd recommend to someone wanting to know more about real estate investing? All right. So I have two books. Neither one of them are directly related to investing. Okay. Um, one's more like financial acumen. I think every person should read it. It's a pretty easy read. Uh, okay. The psychology of money. I read okay. that about two years ago was the first time I read it. And then I just read it this week preparing for this, for this meeting. Nice. But I think the one thing that I loved about that book is legitimately like the psychology of how you think about money. It's different from person to person. Yeah. Um, there's some fundamental things in that book that I think were very helpful to like, just remind myself perspective is important. How you treat money is very different than how someone else just treats money. And like, if you ever want to give financial advice to a friend, just be mindful that, the way you think about it is different. And then also how important money is to be smart with it, right? So mm. they talk a lot about like Warren Buffett. The reason he's so rich is not because he was the smartest investor of all time. He just started really early and the compounding interest thing really, really helped him out. Mm-hmm. So like the realization that more people need to know about the fundamentals of money than do, than do currently, like that's just it really, really hit home. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I love that. And I, I think we don't talk about financial, you know, literacy enough in school or in America, but it is funny. Like I have friends that will only discuss money and business and finances and investments. And then you have those other friends that like, they don't ever want to talk about money. Right? right. And I think there's, there's gotta be a middle ground a little bit there. Um, but you're right. It's not something I've ever thought about. And I, I haven't read that book and now I'm going to, but it's like, <laughs> when I do talk to someone that maybe doesn't want to have that conversation, am I, am I, you know, getting under their skin or something like that? And I'm never trying to, but it's just like, that's what I'm always, I'm always thinking about real estate, you know, yep. like I'm always thinking about the next investment or next opportunity. Um, so it's just a uh, great book or what was the second book? I guess the other ones never split the difference. Uh, okay. Um, so that's a book about negotiation, the art of negotiation. Really good story about how an FBI agent essentially rebuilt the entire 
frame of reference of negotiating with terrorists, essentially. Um, the one concept that I find valuable in my personal life, mm -hmm. at work or at home, dealing with my daughter, and then something I've taken to real estate is the faster you get someone to know is the sooner you get them to yes. Mm. Because the more you can ask questions that they can say no to, the better you can articulate your questions to get them to, yet, to, to say yes to. So that's a concept that I think is important, especially in real estate, is if you know what someone's looking for, it yep. makes your search, whether it's buying or selling, so much easier. Don't all, always give them the opt out. Ask them open-ended questions, get conversation going, but really figure out what is it they need and what are you going to be able to provide to them. So that was always a concept. I talk about it with my team at work all the time, like negotiating with people that we don't want to do something, but it's not because yeah. we don't want to do it. It's like, we want to make sure that we're the, the best value or the best bang for our buck. So think about that concept, but that's probably one of my favorite books. Oh, I, I love that book too. I've read it as well. And, and I love that concept too, because negotiation is such a huge part of real estate, um, either as an agent or as an investor. And so <laughs> any book I can get my hands on in negotiations, I love to, to read them. I took courses to become a master certified negotiation expert. Like I've done everything I can to become an amazing uh, negotiator so that I'm basically trying to get the best deals for myself. And it really has helped with three young kids uh, yes. to be able to negotiate with them because... <laughs> They don't take no for an answer. They're the best negotiators I know out there is, right. is like a three or four year old, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so Jason, what is your favorite productivity tip or trick? Maybe an app that lets you get more done than the normal person. Yeah. Um, mine is more of like self-reflection. So okay. like even during like preparing for this is thinking about like, I think it's always good to sit down and reflect on what you've accomplished. Mm -hmm. or failures, right? So um, I do write goals down for myself in my office. I have big like three by four um, sticky pads up on the wall. Nice. And I always like write down things or notes that I'm thinking about. But um, I've also like learning back to reflect on things that I've done or where I've come from um, is super important in my opinion. So knowing that I started as like a frontline associate at Humana, just answering phone calls, minimum mm -hmm. wage. And knowing like, here's the things that I did to get to where I was. And like, here's the things that I'm gonna continue doing to get to where I want to be. And here's the things I'm not gonna do. So I don't hinder my ability to go that way. So I think reflecting back on past things is really, really important. And I think oftentimes we're going so fast that we don't just say, hey, like, what did I do to get here? And do I like where I am? Mm -hmm. And if not, what got you there? And how do you pivot to go somewhere else? I love that concept. It, it It's aligned with something I think about, which I always say is success leaves clues. And it's like, hey, what got you from that frontline associate to that first promotion? Hmm. Right. Well, that might get you to the next, to the next, to the next step. Or what else do I have to add to what I did to be able to get to that next step? So I love that mindset. I, I hadn't heard it described like that. So thanks for sharing that. Um, what's the biggest real estate mistake or failure you've made? And what did you learn from that experience? Um, yeah, this one is probably not so much a failure, but an op a missed opportunity. So okay. we bought our first house at the end of, um, so 2008. So we paid nothing for it essentially. Nice. And so we sold it when it was worth a lot. And I told my wife when we were selling, I was like, I don't want to sell it. I want to rent it. Like, yeah, it's, it's how we're going to make things happen later in life. And it just made me really anxious. And I, and we didn't end up renting it out. We ended up selling it. And yeah. that was something like, I regret that to this day. Mm -hmm. And so I've made it a commitment, like any house I buy from here on out, I will never sell it again. <laughs> I'll use it as a rental, no matter what. Um, that was like my biggest like opportunity thing that I think I missed. Um, yeah. The second one is just, I am in that analysis paralysis phase where I got to mm -hmm. get out of just thinking about it and I just got to do it. And, and I know if you've mentioned on this podcast numerous times, it's like the best experience is failure. So how do I figure that out? And I just got to jump in and do it. And it's just, it's, a concept that I continue to think about that I just haven't made to execute on. And I think that's just a mistake and a failure that I just need to figure out and go forward you, and figure it out and make it happen. Yeah. I mean, you've been successful every other thing you've tried, right? Like th that's what I tell people. And like so many mm -hmm. people think I'm going to make this mistake and it's so much money. And it's, it, you gotta, it's like, well, you bought that house and you made all that money. The mistake was selling it. Right. It's like, and that's what your in first investment. And it could be, you come to a point where you're like, you talked about multifamily before, maybe you buy three or four single families and you're like, you know what? I could sell all these and then just buy one multifamily, right? So even through that journey, there's a lot of times I've pivoted or changed my mindset of like, hey, I want to go this route. Or, and you sometimes you go all in here and then you go, oh, nope, I want to go all in there. So 
uh, it, but you only know when, when you get started, right? I did short-term rentals. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Short-term rentals are great. Everyone's doing it. People are cash cow. I don't like hospitality. So I'm a terrible short-term rental host, but my wife's amazing. So we can, we can balance ourselves out. But we also learned, hey, this isn't, we're not going to build this huge portfolio of short-term rentals, right? Because mm-hmm. that's not what we want to be managing. I don't want my wife or on date night, Friday night, dealing with check-in instructions at, every night, you know, every Friday right. night. So um, you got to do something, but you'll pivot even in your investing journey. Everybody pivots. So, um, but it's because they're always pivoting forward, right? Instead of not doing anything, you can't pivot if you do nothing. So it's like getting started allows you to ultimately refine what you want to do most. So I highly advise like get out there, do something. It might not be this year, right? Rates are wrong. You know, maybe you want to save some more money. There's reasons why you don't. It's not always analysis paralysis. Sometimes it's you just got to wait for the right moment. Right. Um, but at some point you do have to take action. And, um, I know once you do, you'll be successful in what you do, bud. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right. Last question. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Um, I think I'd want to be remembered as someone that has helped other people or made a positive influence on the people around me. Um, something that I came to came to light a few months ago is a buddy of mine had this opportunity where he was working two jobs had an opportunity to, to buy a, biz, a business and we were having a conversation and it just didn't connect with him. Like he would go home in the middle of the day. So like he was a teacher mm-hmm. um, and he worked like four hours in the morning and four hours in, in the late afternoon. So he'd go home and sleep for six hours. I'm like, okay. bro, like that's six hours of your life that you could be doing something productive. Yeah. And like I said it kind of jokingly and like three months later, he's like, man, he's like, like I took that to heart and like actually went out and made something of myself and I ended up buying a business to fill those six hours of time. Wow. So it's like, little things that you say to people you may not think are that big, but I want to make sure that I'm positively influencing other people, whether I recognize it in the moment or I recognize it later. It's like, I want to be remembered as the person that's like, Jason pushed me out of my comfort zone and maybe really think about myself. That's awesome. And you're in the right role as a leader, you know, as a manager of people, you have to have that desire. And I can tell you're an amazing leader and manager because you have that desire, right? The bad managers and leaders are the ones that say, hey, what's my next title? What 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 am I going to get out of it next? And right. your f- focus is, hey, how can I help this individual become the best version of themselves? I, I love it, man. Exactly. Um, so the best place for the Hot REI community to connect with Jason is going to be on LinkedIn at Jason Bunting. We'll include his information in our show notes. Jason, dude, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much awesome. for... Uh, having you on and uh we'll definitely have you on again after your first investment property um i hope that the audience was able to learn some things on how you can network and build a real estate business how leadership and a w-2 can help um provide success uh for your real estate investing journey and to the audience thank you for tuning in today and commit to taking action today to move your investing forward take care and god bless Thank you for listening to the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast. Check out our website, hotrei.com, for additional content and resources. And please take a moment to subscribe and leave a review so we can continue to bring even more value to others through real estate investing.